Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's lovely to see you today as we uh, come together for worship. Um, just to quickly run through the announcements that, that we have uh, for this morning. We're getting to the time of year when the announcements get uh, very, very um, few and far between. But we do have some for you this morning. Um, first of all, uh, after the service, just to take coffee for anyone who can stay behind for a chat and a couple. Um, it's lovely to see you. Then uh, our barbecue is going ahead this afternoon at um, half past four. Um, we're still praying that uh, the weather might do a, a clear off job for us and we get some sunshine. <laughs> Even if it's raining, it's still going to go ahead. So if you've planned to come, please uh, uh, keep planning to come um, and we'll, we'll move into the halls. And uh, it's just a great opportunity uh, to be together. Um, and. Uh, share with one another. Um, if I could ask Russ to come up in just a moment and pause the, 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 the camera um, just for one moment. I'm going to keep going uh, just at the moment. Uh, the Zoom prayer group is on Thursday evening at 10 past 8 and that's uh, great. Also on Thursday evening is the second of the three evenings of Hope Explored and that's upstairs at 8 p.m. Don't take it out. We've been looking at some of the things that the Holy Spirit does, some of the things that, um, that are characteristic of what we might call the age of the Spirit. And so we've been looking at, at different aspects uh, last week, uh, an era of peace. Today is a sense of belonging. God has called us not just to believe, but also to belong. That's very important. Human beings, it's built into us. We need a sense of belonging, a sense of community, or whatever word we want to use there. Even in uh, the perfection of the Garden of Eden, God looked at Adam and he said, it's not good for a man to be alone. Paul writes in Romans 12, in Christ we, though we are many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. He wrote in Ephesians 2, you are members of God's very own family, citizens of God's country, and you belong 
in God's household with every other Christian. The Holy Spirit brings believers together. In Acts 2, uh, in the verses that describe what happened in the church after Pentecost, it says all the believers were together and had everything in common. So we as Christians are given a sense of belonging, that we feel connected to God at a deep level, but also that we feel connected to other believers. I'm going to tease that out a wee bit more in our service this morning. But we're going to worship the Lord and we're going to stand and and sing our first um, hymn this morning and it is your grace is in it. We're sorry, Lord, that at times we push you away. 
or we try to wrestle ourselves out of that place of belonging. We do it sometimes because we're embarrassed, or at other times because we don't like its demands, or at other times because we want to think that we're our own person. And we're sorry that, again, at different times, we behave as if we don't belong to you. We're so thankful that through Jesus we find peace with you and the forgiveness which makes everything well with you. And so it's in his name that we ask for it today, for all our failings and shortcomings. Lord, we so often struggle with who we are. Indeed, the question of identity is one of the, the, the big questions of the days in which we live. We try to fit into all kinds of circles. We try to square all kinds of boxes that, that make us feel like we fit in here, and we belong here. Teach us today to understand that we find our true selves in you, the person we were born to be is found in you, that we belong, that we belong here among your people, that we belong in this world as one of your children. And so we pray that you would open our minds to, to grasp some of that understanding today. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading this morning uh, comes from Romans chapter 12, and uh, some of Romans chapter 12 is very, very well known, and I'm going to read the first eight verses of that um, chapter, Romans chapter 12, and uh, beginning at verse 1, and this is God's Word. Paul writes, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each one of us has one body with many members, and all these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is in leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Amen. And we pray God's blessing to this reading from his word. All right, boys and girls, if you want to come up now and come and see you. Okay. Well, it'd be no surprise. 
surprise to the grown-ups down there that one of the things that is often said in our house by me is, where's my glasses? Where's my keys? Where's my phone? Where's my, or where's the, the remote control? Where's my coat? Where's my trousers? I'm not even to ask where your trousers are, but that happens. Where, 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 I forget things. Well, I'm going to the TV is, yeah, so I think so. If the TV wasn't there, I'd get really worried, so. <laughs> I forget things all the time. It's, so, so, yeah. <laughs> so on my keys, I now have a tag. So that if I lose it, I'm going to just set it down the side. If I lose it and I go up, where's the keys? Everybody goes, groans in our house. I can go to my phone and I can find, it tells me where it is, it actually shows me in the map where it is, but if I press the button. Okay? Now you would be surprised how hard that is to find in the house. <laughs> so, um, if you if the keys are beneath, I've left a couple of dirty shirts lying on the keys beneath them. <coughs> you walk around the room and go, where are they? And for quite some time, but I, I eventually find things. So yesterday, I was up at the General Assembly of our church, which is like the big name government of our church. And I went in and I sat down and went through the first, first part, and then there was a coffee break. So I went out and there was a big long queue in the coffee break, and I also realised I had no uh, coins or anything with me. So I went out to a Starbucks around the corner and I sent an email, had a coffee, came back in, sat in a different seat in a different part of the hall and then went for, I was about to go out for lunch and a big bearded guy came over to me, he was called Seth, and he said, I paid her and uh, I, we, we had a hope of his accent right there and um, we, we did it. Had a, we went out and had lunch together in a Japanese place in Belfast, which was really young. And then he was going home because he'd been up for quite a few days, so he was going way, way, way back up to where he now lives and his church up and um, way up near London Derry. And I was going back to go back into the, the, the assembly meeting. And it was very sunny, if you remember yesterday, and I thought, I was nicely dressed and I thought, this calls for the shades to be brought out. And so, I opened my rucksack to get my sunglasses out. I went, I'm sure I put them, I must have put them in the other pocket. No. Um, I, I, in the middle of that, I got my coat out and my, my book out and my keys out and whatever else I had with me out. And there was no sunglasses. And I thought, oh, don't tell me, I've left them somewhere behind. And the problem is my sunglasses, um, which are these ones, are what, are what are called prescription sunglasses. So when I was driving the car, and it was a bright day, and I was just using ordinary sunglasses, I couldn't see properly. In fact, when I take my glasses off now, um, from about the fifth row back, I can't see people's face. I just see a blur on their faces. I can't make out who it is. So sometimes people walk down the road and wave over to me and they look with glasses on and I go, hello, no idea who you are, but anyway. And uh, so I need my sunglasses for, for when I'm driving and I thought, oh no. And then also because they're prescription sunglasses, they're expensive. And I was going, oh no, my glasses, I'm, I'm going to have to buy a new pair. And I really like those ones, I'll show you why in a moment. And so I trudged back to the our church headquarters building in Belfast and went in and went up to the girl at the desk and said, did anybody hand in a pair of sunglasses? And she went, no. Did you lose a pair? And I said, yes. Oh. And I said, if somebody handed them in, would they go to the, the guys down the desk, the sound desk upstairs with all the buttons and all? And she went, no, they come down here. And I went, right. Oh. And so I walked upstairs. And I went to the second seat that I'd sung in and I looked around and no glasses. I went over to the first seat that I'd sat in, but I knew other people had been sitting in that seat uh, since. I thought there's no chance and I looked around and there's no 
the glasses and I thought, oh, wink. And then there were two ladies sitting and they said, are you looking for sunglasses? And I said, yes. And they said, we found them and we've taken them over to that big guy over there who's doing the sign desk. And so I went over and they had my sunglasses. And you can see why. I just looked the coolest dude ever when I had on. And when I, when I wanted to walk through Belfast and people go, there's your, there's that famous film star, is he a film star, a pop star or something like that? But I wasn't able to do it yesterday, but and I can actually see a lot better with, with them on, even though it's uh, darker in here. And it was really lovely that those two ladies watched out for them and, and gave them in, because they said, we sat here and they were there, and we knew somebody had left them behind, but we didn't know who, and other people came and came and went, and we thought, that's the person coming for this, and they thought, this is somebody who's really lost them, so we better hand them in. And what they were thinking was, we had better act as a team here. Someone else in our team has lost something, we have found it, let's help to get what we have found back to the one who has lost. And that's a tiny, tiny photograph of what the church is like, that we're all a team. I'm talking today about us belonging. And so the church is like a big, big family, all coming together. And one of the things that they do is that they help each other out. And so I'm sure you do that from time to time in Sunday school or stuff like that. I'm sure you do it when you play around and, and carry on when Sunday school hasn't started or it's finished and you have good fun together. That's one of the ways that we show our team. When mums and dads and grannies all go into the team coffee and we sit and chat about our week and all that's been going on, that's one of the ways we show that we're a team. When we all sing together in the hymns, that's one of the ways that we show we're all a team that we belong together, and that's what uh, the Holy Spirit does. He brings all of us together as one. And the amazing thing is, he does it all kinds of places with all kinds of people. So there's churches not meeting not very far away from here right now, and that's a team together there. And they're all together, and they all belong to one another. And you and I, and everyone else here, belong to each other. And I think it's important that we remember that because sometimes you think, oh, I'm just going to go to church, do what I do, and then go home. Uh -uh. No, we're all together, we're all part of one team. So here's a way we can show it. Let's put our hands in the centre here. So if I put my hand down, so I'm the minister, let's do a high amount of hands on top. Go. That is us as a fish cat. If I can reach over the
Let's all join together in our prayers of intercession as we pray for others today. Our Father, we thank you for this gift of belonging and we thank you for these boys and girls who um, help lower the average age of us here on a Sunday morning but who bring so much more than that in their life and their energy and their enthusiasm. Father, we thank you also for this gift of prayer by which we can pray for ourselves and by which we can pray for others, those whom we know and also those whom we don't know. We pray for our church family barbecue today. Thank you that so many have signed up to come along and we pray that it will be a, a truly lovely occasion, a time of connections both new and old. And we ask that it would be a bridge for people to reconnect with church who maybe haven't been around for a while, with all the limitations that COVID have brought, and that will be an encouragement also for those who have been here to see faces re returning and being back around once again. May it be an event that truly touches people. Therefore, we pray for the weather, we pray for safety, and we pray for fun. May it be a really positive event that brings blessing to our congregation today. We do pray for children and young people and students as they arrive now at the summer break. May it be a good summer. We pray that there will be a decline in the recent spike of COVID infections so that families and uh, individuals can enjoy an unrestricted summer that is full of lovely occasions and, and fun. May it be a time when families can be together in a restful and positive manner. We pray for families where there may be pressure or worry or anxiety at this time. We ask that, um, that there would be an opportunity for you, the great healer, to come and help them and bring them to better days and, and help to make their days better than they currently are. Again, we pray for Ukraine and the end of the senseless war. And we ask that your powerful hand would intervene and meet the choices of those who refuse to execute the orders that are given to them and instead choose the path of peace. We remember all those who are directly affected, the grieving, the injured, those under bombardment, those fearful for loved ones, and the millions who are scattered across Europe as refugees, particularly on this Refugee Sunday. May you meet each in their own need, grant safety, care and love. And we pray for the refugees, not only from Ukraine, but from all kinds of other places. Um, Syria, Eritrea, Hong Kong, and other such places where there are conflicts or troubles going on or where there are tensions and people are moving away. Lord, we pray for them as they search for new homes and new lives in other parts of the world. We pray that they would find a new home and a new place for them to be and a place where they can belong in the coming days. We pray for the very difficult situation that happens in the war, where there are believers on one side, and there are believers on the other side. And we pray for Christ to show his care and his wisdom to them. We remember those who were affected by the earthquake in Afghanistan this week. May the help given to, uh, to help them recover, create chinks of light and opportunities to be engaged in relationship building with the country be with those on the ground to help protect them in what can be a complicated and dangerous situation in that country and may their efforts make a difference to those who have been affected we pray for the national government at the moment appearing to limp along from one controversy to the next at a time of massive issues needing to be addressed and for local government at a time of crisis when the assembly is not fully functioning. Lord, we pray for leaders and governments that are focused on serving the people who elect them so that the major issues we face can be addressed. Lord,
Lord, we also know our own private prayers, the hopes and fears and longings that we carry at the moment. Please hear us as we pray for them. Who, um, 
was feeling so lonely that he went to a loneliness therapy group and no one turned up. I spent the ages trying to find that joke. <laughs> That's what I did. It, it was just the way things were. And it played its part why I'm still very content in my own company. If, if you give me the opportunity, I'm quite content uh, to, to be on my own. But there were times growing up when I felt lonely. And it became all the more acute when I entered into that, as I hinted at last week, awkward period that many of us go through um, between mid to late teens. Mother Teresa said that loneliness is the leprosy of the modern world. That's quite a term. It isolates you. It makes you feel cut out. It makes you feel like you're, you're outside of everything. She also said that loneliness and the feeling of being unwanted is the most terrible poverty. Now, she dealt with some uh, uh, desperate scenes uh, in Calcutta, but she, she believed that this was the most terrible form of, of poverty. That in some ways, you are bereft, you are lesser, you are poor, if you're on your own. Ironically, when I became a Christian, at the same time as feeling like I was being, becoming part of something bigger, I was dropped by many of my friends, just like that. They perceived that I was no longer great fun to hang out with, and soon they wanted to hang out with me. No more invitations to parties or to Kelly's in Port Rush, even though she didn't go on there at that age. And yet, at the very same time, I felt totally surrounded. An important part of Christian belief had happened. And what an experience to have at a young age in a life where it would raise its head later on. Because with the Spirit of Christ entering into me when I trusted him as Saviour, I was, and the, the theological term is, I was adopted into his family. I, who was outside, became part of his family. And the way I felt it at the time was that I now was part of the same team as the minister, as the leaders at Port Rush CSSM, as my Sunday school, youth fellowship and BB leaders, even the old ladies in church who used to sit in gallery and, and have a, a really skillful game of blowing fluff um, from a, a, hymn, a strategically placed hymn book uh, to try and get it to land on their hats below us. And if you think bowls is hard or something like that, or golf or anything like that, well take a bit of fluff and then you have to deal with drafts and the, the, the blow of drafts and the strength of the wind outside and how it could blow the fluff in a different direction do you try and get it on the lady's hat down below or the men and um, the, the very sober dark suited men who would have come to the evening service uh, in, in our church hall and when we arrived for youth fellowship we used to take all their hats and swap them all around so that they'd spend an hour and a half hour in the toilets trying to find that my hat that one it was like Laura and Hardy, they were setting hats on top of their heads that were far too small for them, and so on. we would kill ourselves laughing. And they never said a word. They, they just probably smiled at each other. And somehow I felt even part of them. Romans 8 15. You received God's Spirit when He adopted you as His own children. Now we call Him Abba Father. That intimate term, Father. Um, it's the English translation, but it, it is more leaning in the direction of daddy um, rather than father, um, and, and that more uh, close into the term. In, in other words, I had a sense of belonging in the church. I had a sense of belonging to this greater body around the world. The whole Bible is a story of God building a family that he could love, honour, and that could reign with him. That was his desire. That's what he achieved through Jesus. 1 John 3, see how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. We become his children. We're adopted into his family. And you've, you've seen it. You've seen it with us and, and our family, two children who were unrelated to us in every sense of the word, who are now 
of our children. And I look on them, no other way than my daughter, um, uh, as I've said on other occasions, and I've often said at the funeral service, everything that was mine is now going to be theirs. It's not going to be divided up between other folk in the family who look like us. It's theirs because they've been adopted in it. And that's an amazing thing to understand as a Christian that we are adopted right into God's family. He does, he really does become not this sort of anonymous father figure, he becomes our, our daddy in effect. And we have that place in, in his heart and in his family. And this has consequences for us. In Ephesians 2.19 it says, Now you are no longer strangers or foreigners to heaven, but you are members of God's very own family, citizens of God's country, and you belong in God's household with every other Christian. It's an amazing thing to, to, to really get a full grasp of. And we're not only called just to believe, we are also called to belong. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, this need to belong has always been there, even in the Garden of Eden. God looked at Adam and, and saw that it, it wasn't perfect. There was more needed. And, and so and Eve was made. And I'm, I'm sure you've heard the joke. And God looked down at Adam and thought, oh dear, this guy's lost. He can't do anything for himself. What are we going to do? And, he said, Adam, you look lost. And Adam said, well, I am lost. I, I can't cook, I can't clean, I can't do anything for myself. Um, I need a helper. And God said, mm, no, I have something. And Adam said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, I'd be an arm and a leg for that. And Adam said, well, what could you throw together for a rib? And uh, <laughs> so we got ladies. That's not my joke. <laughs> the picture payments is, is this very intimate one. In our reading from Romans 12 this morning, it really captures that sense of belonging. It describes the belonging, it changes the picture from a family to, to a human body, a very, uh, very physical terms. Verse 5, in Christ we though many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. So, so um, your kidneys or something like that, um, they're part of your body, and um, they're they're woven into you, and and you need them, and, and you know they need to be operating and fulfilling their role. This picture of a vital organ within the body demonstrates that's how important we are within the body of Christ, and it's how important that we are that we're each connected to the other. If we're not connected, then the suggestion is that we don't belong. And we don't want that. In his book, The Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren refers to um, notes that C.S. Lewis had took, taken about the word membership. And he said that what the world has done is, is in a sense, empty the meaning of membership out. Where now it is simply, it describes you being part of a club or a, a recreational part, pastime or a or an interest or something like that. Companies use it and use your name to, to generate email distribution lists. And sometimes even the church has been part of it where it reduces being a member of a church to simply being a name on a list. But Paul's portrayal of a member being like a vital organ, like an eye or a heart or a hand, brings that sense of belonging right into the indispensable realms of connection, that we lose something immensely significant without it. I wonder if you ever thought about your place in the church in that way? Or have you ever thought about that your place in the church is an indispensable place? I wonder do you realise you're that much wanted within the body of the church? I wonder if you ever looked around at all the other people uh, and seen your connection to them in such a way. Um, sometimes um, you go up to the, you go to the general assembly and you see people coming in, people coming in from all over the country, and 
you know, different dress styles and different mannerisms and stuff really fit into that. And yet when you come together in the building and you start to worship, you begin to realise, yeah, I actually do belong to, to all these people. There's so much more than the people who sit in the same building. And in church, we're so much more than the people who sit in the same building on a Sunday morning. From those around us, we find support and encouragement. We're given a sense of value and a role to play. Only the Holy Spirit can make that happen. It's an act of God that, that all these strangers all come together and become a church family, people who lean on one another. Ephesians 4 verse 3, you are joined together with peace through the Spirit. So make every effort to continue in this way. It means that God brings us together, but then it's, it's down to us in the working out of that and in the, the embodiment of it. Our place in the body of Christ is a choice because we can choose to be or not to be or only now and again a part. But that's not what's being referred to here. Imagine if your heart only worked sporadically, now and again. Imagine if it only worked one day a week. Your blood pressure would be affected. You'd be lightheaded and dizzy and blurred vision and confused. Which makes me think maybe my heart's not working. And uh, you'd be at risk of a heart attack or a stroke or, or heart failure. You would not be able to do what, what you do. There wouldn't be the role of the blood being pumped around the body and taking oxygen and nutrients and, and then filtering out carbon dioxide and, and waste products. Instead, we are being encouraged to choose to take our place in the church, in the body, in the team, in the family, whatever term we want to use, all the time. So belonging is actually really important to us as Christians. From feeling a part to making a contribution. Just like every heart, every person can contribute to the life of the church. In our reading Paul lists some examples, and there are only some examples that there are different gifts. Prophesying, serving, teaching, encouraging, and um, giving, leading, showing mercy. And as we engage, so our sense of belonging deepens. And that, that only makes sense if we become more and more a part of something, we'll feel more and more connected to it. That's been one of the big frustrations of COVID, that it has created a situation where, where many have not been physically a part of church because um, there was lockdown and because there was limitations. Um, what is now beginning to reveal is it's like there's been a bit of a robbery has gone on in the church and many of its most precious resources and those being the people who are part of it have been hopefully temporarily nicked away from us. And many churches have experienced this, and the church is by no means the only ones who have experienced this, where there's been uh, voluntary service in a body. Many have stepped aside through illness, through age, end of life, or their own personal choice. In Christ, we belong. We are no longer outsiders not really a part of what's going on. We're, we're, we're insiders. We're not strangers, unacquainted to each other, or unfamiliar with what goes on. We, we understand what happens here, what here is about. In Christ, we don't pay lip service. We're heart and soul for the church, and this church, and his family, and his body. We belong to him, and we belong to one another. And the difference that makes is, is amazing. We're never alone, therefore. It's one of the ways that God fulfills his promise, I will never leave you. He, he presences, that's a word, himself with us through his people. 
as well as by his Holy Spirit. It reminds us that we are part of something much, much bigger than ourselves. And our world could, could do with understanding that maybe more often than it currently does. And that we have a role to play. Now that's not... A role to play could be a job to do, a duty for, to fulfil, and they all sound like... I don't, something to contribute. Something that we can be a part of um, is, is maybe better ways to look at it. These are all the kinds of differences that come in when we understand that we belong. And the more we belong, the more we, we gain out of that. I remember in 1995, I led my second uh, PCI youth team in the Czech Republic. And on this trip, we had to travel from Prague to a town called Krudin, um, which is a small town, um, some distance from Prague. And we were told, when you arrive, somebody from the church would be there to meet you. And we said, who? And there would be somebody there. But what would it look like? I don't know that. There was somebody there to meet you when you get off the train. How will they know us? Um, because there's lots of backpackers in the train and so we just look like oh, another group of backpackers. The train pulled into Crudium Station and I um, was at the door and the, um, the, the window was down to reach out and open the door. And the train came along and there was lots of people on the platform and it came along and along and I was looking at all these people and my eye just stopped on one particular guy. And, and he looked at me and there were no words, no signs, nothing. We just knew instantly, that's, that's, the, that's the guy we have to meet. That's the guy in the train that I have to meet. I'd never met him before. I didn't know what he was looking like. But instantly there was recognition and instantly there was, there was a relationship. It wasn't like meeting a stranger for a brand new first time. It was like meeting someone you hadn't seen for some time because we belonged to the same family. We belonged to the church, we belonged to the Lord, we belonged to one another. And I've experienced that in, in many other places, in Kenya, and I got the opportunity um, early in my time here uh, to go and uh, participate in a, a communion service. I was the first white person ever to do a communion service in this place. And, uh, they used real wine, and my lasting memory of it was um, that the wine was like rocket fuel, and it had to be finished. And I saw the elders and the minister dancing off into the bush, um, very merrily, um, uh, with, with the bottle and I went with them. I felt it in, in Hong Kong, in Thailand, again in the Czech Republic. I've even felt it in England, um, Irish people in England, you know, that's all like, and so on. But I felt that connection, that sense of belonging. The entrance of the Holy Spirit into our lives brings people together to feel that they belong to one another. It's what the Spirit does, it's one of his roles, it's one of his jobs. People don't remain on the fringe. They belong and they feel they belong and they feel that they're a part of that locality of God's family. Pray together. Lord, thank you that we're never alone in your family. You've promised to be with us always, and by your Holy Spirit you are. And we're always a part of your body in the church. Help us to feel that part, that we belong in your family. And to begin to experience the joy, the privilege, the support and the place and identity that it gives to us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we bring our service together, we come to our final hymn, and far too many bits of paper here on my desk, and of course it is when I survive the Holy Cross. <coughs>